What's good, bro? My friend and I just finished making the AI voice uh, text-to-speech bots say racist things, but that's besides the point. Today, I'm gonna be talking to you about why pump powders and all these fucking pre-workouts that you see so heavily advertised in the, like, mainstream fitness industry YouTubers, these people, they're mostly a scam, and you're better off with more natural ingredients, as you can tell by the thumbnail, and also this slide, which has the same thing on it as the thumbnail. Do this instead. My story with pre-workouts, I got scammed, but not really. What is supposed to be, like, hailed as uh, one of the best pre-workouts you can get? Gorilla Mode. What is more expensive than Gorilla Mode? Gorilla Mode Nitric. Uh, the only difference is, Nitric doesn't have caffeine. It has a few uh, more of other ingredients. And it's supposed to give you fucking... Like, the advertising they put on their website is like, Skin-splitting pumps. Your life will be changed forever. Your wife will uh, finally uh, not leave you and uh, keep the kids or whatever the fuck. Right? And then you take it. And uh, I, I fell for the meme. Believe it or not. Uh... I never bought any other supplement, but over a very long period of time, I made the very, very wise, conscious decision to get Gorilla Mode Nitric. Uh, spoiler alert, it did not end well. I tried that bitch. I tried one full scoop. Um, literally no difference, right? And it's like, what are the chances my package is defective? Probably not very high. So we can just mostly assume that it's all marketing. And you're better off following the harder, longer, and more natural way, rather than giving fucking money to steroid users, right? Who the fuck ever thought that would be a good idea? The good news, right, so you don't, like, stay awake at night uh, being afraid that I lost $60 on Gorilla Mode Nitric, is that they have thus far... Not thus far. I'm sorry, bro. I'm not gonna cut this out. It's all in one take. I don't have fucking time for that, but... Uh, as of now, they've refunded it. So, no harm, no harm done. And I still have the Gorilla Mode Nitric, which doesn't fucking do anything, and it tastes like chalk, it tastes like asshole, but at least the powder's there. I have some, like, something that I can make into, like, cement if I want to, mix it with something, um, use it as a stand-in prop for other white powders that I can't as easily get my hands on. I can find a whole myriad of other uses for it uh, that do not involve giving me a pump, because it is pretty dog shit at that. And if that is supposedly the best dose pre-workout on the market, then... I'm gonna go ahead and assume that all the other ones, at least the ones that aren't caffeinated, are pretty dog shit as well. Now, how do you actually get a very nice pump without giving your money to tremble and acetate abusers? You gotta cover your non-training variables and your non-non-training variables, so your fucking training variables, my guy. Let's start off with things outside of the gym. Number one, obviously, uh, actually not so obviously for some people, because there are some people who fucking forget to bring their water to the gym is hydration. This includes both water and electrolytes. Some people confuse it, uh, hydration for just chugging five fucking bottles of water. And while that is better than doing nothing at all, you also need the electrolytes or it'll throw off, I think you're like osmolarity or some shit. And then uh, it'll have the opposite effect of what you really wanted. So electrolytes, uh, they sound like this fancy marketing term that everyone just puts on there like, wow, Prime, the new Prime fucking stick pack has 500 milligrams of electrolytes. Literally all it is, it's some minerals and vitamins that help you, uh, help your body uh, use water for fucking hydration of the muscles and whatever else, right? So, so the most important ones are potassium and sodium. Potassium you can get from coconut water, which is uh, very, very good for hydration in general. So you should add that one to your list of shit to get. And... Has the fucking pen clicking been audible? I'm so sorry if it has. I've just been clicking my pen like an autist this entire video. I'm gonna stop now. And also salt, which you can get for... I mean sodium, which you can get from salt. Yippee. Now, the type of salt uh, you use doesn't really matter. A lot of people like the Himalayan pink salt because it has some other trace minerals. If that makes you feel better, go ahead. Realistically, it probably won't make that big of a difference though. But you definitely want to be getting your potassium and sodium in as well as a fuckload of water before, during, and after your training. Number two, the basis for anything, if you want to succeed in anything in life, is sleep, and don't be a dumbass who just, like, stays up watching fucking... What haven't I said yet? Like, Hearts of Iron montages or some shit, right? Go to sleep, my guy, please. Eight to nine hours, if not ten, preferably. It'll help you get the best pump, because uh, my source is just trust me. Uh, yeah. Go get your sleep, get your water, uh, get your hydration in. That will fucking 
pull the water into your muscle, give you a better pump, because what is a pump? It's blood flow into the muscle, which is mostly water. And so if you have more water and more shit that help absorb water in the correct places, then that'll help you out with that a lot. Same thing with sleep. It'll make you help, make you help, nice English skills again. It'll help you make all the hormones required to uh, assist you with that. Number three, this is a very controversial one. I mean, not controversial. No one can refute that it works. It's just whether or not you're willing to uh, take the risk. It's raw garlic. Just chew that shit like a true Bosnian, Hungarian, whatever you may be, of whatever origin you may be. Your country probably uses garlic in their food, as medicine maybe, as a nice, nice uh, flavoring for toothpaste, you know, everything. This stuff's fucking great. The only downside, and I do mean the only downside, of uh, having garlic is it will make you smell like asshole, and there is no way around it, no matter what you do. Just the essence of it will make itself known. And that's very unfortunate. If you're willing to bear the responsibilities and the trials and tribulations that come with that, go ahead, have that bitch, have some raw garlic before you train as a caveman pre-workout. Um, but just try to get the, like, non-purple ones, right? Because there, there are some, like, there's some really shit quality garlic that's, like, shipped from, like, some factory in Taiwan. <laughs> and that tends to not be the best for you. Try to get something local and organic. But just keep in mind that for most people, if you want to actually, like, talk to anyone during your day, it will not be worth it. It will make you smell like asshole, uh, which makes it perfect for home workouts where you don't have to communicate with other people. You already know the deal with that. Number four is honey. Honey uh, can be a stand-in for any fast-digesting carb. Honey is just very tasty and convenient. Uh, you can pretty much get it anywhere. It never goes bad, like quite literally. It's extremely easy to eat, and it's also entirely natural. Uh, something like a fucking Krispy Kreme donut, if you had that, that could also work. Over time, it will make you like severely unhealthy as compared to honey. And um, the honey will do just as good, if not a better job, at getting you a pump because uh, the fast digesting carbs help refill your glycogen stores, which helps you push harder, which helps you get a pump. Nice English again. Which helps you get a better pump. You already know how that goes. <clears throat> Make sure you get some uh, fast digesting carbohydrate before your workouts, if possible. And the last one, as I mentioned already, with the electrolytes, salt. Just salt your shit pre-workout uh lol okay if you have any food any meal add a bit of extra salt to that before just so you make sure you uh take care of all your electrolytes and you will be golden with your non-training variables moving on to the non non-training variables uh within your actual lifts and exercises first off you have your tempo if you really really want to avoid a pump at all costs fucking dive bomb your eccentrics and then like the push up as fast as you can on the concentric and like do like three reps of the exercise right and that will help you avoid the pump as much as possible so if you want the converse of that if you want to get the maximum blood flow maximum pump get the tempo slow enough so that you can feel the muscle not too much where you're like doing a one arm cable pull down with like fucking 10 pounds because you have like a 10 second eccentric but do like a nice one mississippi or two mississippi maybe eccentric pause for a little bit if your like intuition tells you that it's applicable there and do not go overly slow but having that tempo and being in control of the weight will really help you feel the muscle more do all the things that i said previously and uh will help you achieve that pump number two is mechanical drop sets which uh helps achieve pretty much the same thing it can fry your muscle absolutely fucking destroy whatever fiber you're working and what a mechanical drop set is is uh basically Imagine you're doing like a tricep row push down or something. Uh, you start off with yourself very close and vertical to the cable. You start doing the push downs. Once you reach failure in that stance, you can go down and hinge a little bit more at the hips. Use a tiny bit more momentum and fucking knock out a few extra reps that way. So you can take your triceps closer to actual failure. You do not want to train with mechanical drop sets all the time because that just gets very impractical to track. And that's pretty much the main reason. Use them smartly. Use them where you think they will make sense. Again, trust your instincts. But use them sparingly. Number three is high reps relatively to whatever exercise you're doing. This does not mean 
I want to get a glute and lower back pump. I'm going to do fucking 25 reps on the deadlift because that makes no sense whatsoever and you're going to kill yourself. And I do not want you to kill yourself. So, uh, be relative, okay? High reps for something like the deadlift is 5. High reps for a squat is like 10. High reps for a bench is like anything fucking 12 and above. Maybe going above 12 reps on a bench press just seems excessive. High reps for any isolation movement means that you're doing like more 10 to 15, for example, instead of 8 to 12. Notice that this is not necessary for progression. You can absolutely do something like a 6 to 10 on barbell curls, but you will not get as good of a pump, most likely, as if you went with that 10 to 15, because that is more time under tension, more time to fucking get the lactic acid built up, which does not necessarily equal more muscle growth, but it's... uh it gives you a better pump, which could be more fun for several people. And if that is your preferred method of training, that's your preferred like uh, outcome for your training sessions, then that is how you go about achieving that. So use relatively high reps. And the last thing is mind-muscle connection. The mind-muscle connection is something that a lot of people, much like meditation, get really fucking not confused, but they get really disheartened about when they don't get it for the first time. You have to understand that it comes with time, and it also comes with how much you love your training. Much like uh, meditation, the equivalent example for this would most likely be just getting a bunch of thoughts, right? Think of having a really good mind-muscle connection as when you're meditating, having no thoughts, you're completely in a flow state, and uh, you're, be you're able to be completely present. In the similar way, once you're in a training session, doing an exercise, and you can focus on that very, very well, um, you can feel the muscle working better, you can really fucking sense that shit activate, and all that good stuff. This comes with time, it comes with practice, and if you don't get it right the first time, or even in the first, like, six months to a year, if you don't perfect it, you have your entire career to perfect that. The main thing is that you just keep showing up, and to know that it does come with time, and it does come with your love for your training, because imagine if you're just some guy in there, like, fucking horsing around minimal loads, not even hefty loads, you're just, like, ego lifting, but, like, with dog shit low weights, you don't really care about your form, you don't really care about the weight on the bar, all you care about is that you can say that, oh, I went to the gym, yippee, but you don't actually like it, you don't care about it, um, the exercise you're doing, you have no real connection to emotionally or physically. Are you gonna have the best mind-muscle mind connection if you're in that situation? My guess would be most likely not. In the similar situation, if you went on the fucking Medito app, set the timer for one minute, and then you just sat there with your eyes open, thinking about shit, not even attempting to do any of the prompts the guy tells you, do you think you're gonna be your most present? Nope. So just keep showing up with the intention to improve it a little, little bit over time. Uh, if there's one mistake that you're noticing, like your fucking hip shoot up first on the squat or whatever, or like you're letting your forearms take over too much on a pull down or a row. Try to fix that a little bit the next time. See if that helps with the mind muscle connection whatsoever. But do not beat yourself up if you don't get it. Uh, especially if you're within the first few years of your training like I am. Those were the non non training variables to getting a pump. And uh, all these things combined should help you avoid having to buy the fucking gorilla mode shit gorilla mode nitric.